What's up, guys? David from Biddle MCOM. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're in Premiere Pro, and we're looking at simply creating some creative titles. Here we go. So first, I'm going to start with a blank session. I'm going to go down in this little post-it note thing, the new item icon, and I'm going to create a black video. Uh, 1920 by 1080, that's fine with me. Hit OK. There's my black video. If I click and drag that into my timeline, it will create a sequence that's 1920 by 1080. That's all I need to get started to make a title. So the next step is I need to click on my type tool, which is this letter T over here. Click it. Go up in my window pane in my program monitor and click anywhere that I'd like. And I'm going to type MCOM 130. Now I'm going to go up into the right. Make sure my essential graphics panel is selected here. If you're on one of the other ones, you want to jump over to essential graphics. If you can't find that, go to window, essential graphics. Make sure it's got that check mark by clicking it and it should pop up over here. All right. So now you can see I typed MCOM 130. There it is in my program monitor. I'm going to click off of that in this empty space. And while I still have my type tool selected, I'm going to click in here and type video production. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, click out of it in essential graphics, and then go back into the program monitor. And I'm going to click Lewis and Clark. You're going to do the same thing again, one more time, community college. And I'm going to go and click out of it. Okay, so now I have MCOM 130 video production, Lewis and Clark Community College, as you guessed it. If you're new to the channel, I teach at LC and I teach this course. Okay, so now what I have done is I have created this text layer down in my timeline. You can see it right there over the black video layer. But what's interesting about this is because I use my essential graphics panel and I was clicking in my little window here, it put them all all four lines of my text into the same text layer. And that's significant because then we can control it after we've made some adjustments to it. We can control it and make it all work as one item. Okay, so now let's go ahead and adjust it. I'm going to switch back to my selection tool. I can do that by hitting the letter V or just clicking on that arrow. And now I can kind of center out uh, my text wherever I'd like it. So it makes it look, you know, maybe a little nicer and a little snazzier. Right now it's uh, just kind of a jumbled mess. I can also do that in my essential graphics panel by moving my position left to right, up and down, or I can just hit this alignment icon under align and transform and go straight to the center. And then if I click on video production, do the same thing, dead center, Lewis and Clark, same and same. Okay. They're still not perfect. I need to adjust them so it looks nice and neat. Uh, but the thing that jumps out to me the most is they're not the... Same width as each other. It might look okay this way, but I think I'd like to change it up. Let's go ahead and start by changing some of uh, the fonts. I want a thicker font on MCOM 130. So I'm going to select MCOM 130. And if I go down to my font menu here, I'm going to type, I know Gotham is nice and thick. Let's go and do Gotham Black. There we go. Nice thick th font on MCOM 130. I'll leave video production on the Baby Snoe or whatever that is. Uh, and I'll make Lewis and Clark a little thicker as well. So I'll click on that. I can do it in the program monitor or I can do it over here in my little window. And I'm going to find a nice thick font. And I have lots of fonts to choose from. Which one? Let's uh, go. Those are all Gotham. Uh, let's just find one real quick here. Okay, this one right here. Whoa, boy, oh boy, that is hideous. Let's find a different one. Ninja Garden. Man, could I not have picked a uglier couple of fonts. All right, whatever. We'll go with this one. And I'll move it to the center. <laughs> That's the ugliest font I've ever seen. Okay, so Community College, let's find another one. Uh, we'll go to a thin one here. That was a nice one. Where was it? Okay, Gilroy. All right, so we've got some weird font choices here. I just kind of want to show that they're all very different widths and thicknesses, but uh, we're going to fix that, and we're going to make it where they all kind of align together. So even if the fonts are real bad looking together, if I make them the same width, it kind of helps. First, I want to fix my anchor point. So if you zoom in right here and you see this little uh, circle with the crosshair in it, that's my anchor point. And all that is, that's the point at which the animation um, or, or orientation works off of. So this whole text layer right here, it all works off of this one little anchor point. So what I need to do, I can click on this and I can drag it to the dead center. 
and that helps it where now the anchor point's in the center. Let me show you why that's significant. If I go down to video production, my anchor point's still in the bottom left right there. And in MCOM 130, it's in the dead center. So now, watch what happens when I click on video production. Go to my effect controls and find my video production here. And I'm going to scroll down to rotation on video production. Here we go. Yeah, it does it from that edge, and it looks kind of weird, right? Unless that's what you're going for, uh, it's kind of messed up. If I go to MCOM 130 and do the same thing, fly that open and go to rotation, MCOM 130 rotates from the center. And so it, it makes more sense to have it centered if that's what you're going for. Specifically, if I do scale, it scales it from the center, and it looks nicer. If I go to video production and do the same thing with the scale motion right there, where is video production? There we go, and I go to scale over here. It scales it from that corner, and so it's harder, and then you have to recenter things and replace things. So it's just easier to go in here, find your anchor point, try to put it uh, at the center of each piece of text. It might take a little bit of time, um, but it's worth it in the end. You can also adjust your anchor point over here, uh, but it actually moves the text around the anchor, and you can see that there. Okay. So now they're all set uh, with center anchor points. And now let's go ahead and move them back to the center by hitting my align and transform and the centering button. Okay. They're all in the center of the screen. You cannot uh, say that they're not. So now let's go ahead and adjust them so the size is closer to each other. I'm going to start. With, I think I'm going to try to make them all the width of this hideous Lewis and Clark right here. Um, and so let's start with Community College. If I go down here, this little thing that says VA with these uh, lines spreading apart, that's the kerning controls. And what kerning is... It is the space between each character in a piece of font. So if I take this and I drag it to the right, it'll stretch it out. If I drag it to the left, it will tighten it up. And it literally just puts those letters a little bit closer to each other. So I'm going to kind of line it up that way. But look, it's moved my anchor point. So I need to move my anchor point back to the center. Lewis and Clark. Now look, those are kind of the same. And I can adjust it where they're a little closer to each other. Maybe... Uh, we'll get to that in a second. I don't know why it's not working yet. It's being finicky. Okay, so now video production, I want to do the same thing, but I'm going to stretch this one out. And I'm going to try to make it. I want to try to make because And this is significant because if I do this, it actually expands the entire thing. If I grab uh, the little bounding box and I try to stretch it out, that's not what I want at all. I want this font to say the same size, and I want to adjust the kern kerning and the spacing in between. So this is why it's significant that you know how to use kerning so you don't have to go in there and adjust the, um, the scale of your text over and over and over. So now the last one is MCOM 130. Let's go ahead and stretch that guy out. And we're just trying to make a little rectangle. All right. So it's not the best looking thing in the world. In fact, it's kind of ugly, but uh, it looks a little bit better than it did when we first started. I think I need to change the anchor point on MCOM 130. I don't think I did that yet. No, I didn't. There we go. Click and drag it. All right. So now we have our little rectangle of text. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and make one more change. Um, if I want to change the color of these individually, I can easily do that. Uh, since I put them all in one essential graphics layer and I'm going to change MCOM 130, go down to fill, click on the white box and I'm going to drag this somewhere in blue because Lewis and Clark's colors are blue, white, uh, black and gray. Um, so I'm going to find this blue. It's kind of close. It's not exactly the same. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have a little more character uh, to my title. I actually really just hate how ugly this looks. So maybe it's not so creative and I'll change the name of this tutorial to something else. But anyway, here we go. So I've got it uh, built here and now I want to add a little more character to it. While I'm still clicked in my text layer here, I'm going to click on my rectangle tool, which is this little box here. Click on it and I'm going to draw a rectangle around this and cover it up. Totally covered up. Now I have a rectangle. But if you look over in my essential graphics panel, it's added a shape layer. I'm going to rename that to rectangle. So now we know that that is my rectangle. If I were to take all four of our lines of text, go down, highlight them all, go down to this little folder, click on create group. It groups them all in this little file folder. So now my text is in there. My rectangles outside of it. 
So now watch what happens when I change the position of rectangle and group one and I drag it down underneath group one, let it go. Now, just like that, I have a cool little placard, like a cool little card that shows my uh, text. MCOM 130 video production, Lewis and Clark Community College. And it's got its very own anchor point if you zoom in. And so now it is a separate item from my text. However, since I've grouped it all together, I can control it. <laughs> if I click it right, I can control it as one item. So now it actually is truly this little placard and it is a uh, kind of a creative way to make a little box with some text in it if that's what you're going for uh, either way it's just something to help you figure out how to do it so now let's say I want to make this a little more creative the rectangle same way I did with changing the color of MCOM 130 just click on rectangle click on rectangle go down to fill click on this box let's go ahead and let's do something cool and add a gradient to it if I go to this little drop down here go to linear gradient I'm going to click on this box to pick my first color, and I'm going to go with a yellowish kind of doodad. Oh, man. So I click on this little yellow thing, then I click on this little box over here, and I drag it down. I'm going to find orange, and I'm going to find a little space for orange here. I think that works. I'm going to hit OK, and now we have this cool little gradient, and it's part of, uh, and it's part of the entire process. So... You could be done there if you wanted, and now I have this little center-aligned uh, um, card that tells whatever information I want on it. I just chose the name of our class. Um, but we can also add animation to the thing pretty easily. I'm not going to get too deep into that, um, but if I just go to Effects, I can even add a general transition onto this. You know what? In fact, first, let me move this. Let me move the whole thing. I'll go up to Effects, and I'll move the position. I'm going to take the whole card, and I'm going to put it in the bottom left. So it kind of looks like a little lower third thing. Maybe you have uh, uh, some more information about your class or your project or whatever you're doing. Um, and now if I go to effects and I go to video transitions, let's throw this little whip transition on here. And I'll just put it at the front, just like if I were doing it on any other clip. Now go to the front and my whole little text card whips in with that cool little transition. So I can do it that way by adding a simple transition effect that way. Or if I like doing it, on my own, I can go up to the effect controls while it is selected, and I want to adjust the position, add a keyframe for that. I'll take it totally out of frame, and then I'll drag that keyframe to the beginning, so it's right at the beginning. Now, if I want to whip it back into frame on my own, I can put it where I want. It's created the second keyframe just by me doing that. Now, when I hit play, there it is, and now I have this little... Cool 1994 graphic. Looks like some clip art or something. Uh, I can even add other effects to it. Uh, where is that? Rotation. We'll add a keyframe for that. Um, and then we'll come over here and we'll add a ridiculous amount of spins for no reason. And I'll put both of those in. And now we really are going 1994 here. Oh, yeah. I, you couldn't even see that. There we go. Some ridiculous piece of garbage. Anyway, there you go. A simple way uh, to understand how to make uh, more creative titles. And now, I am not a graphic design artist, as you can see. Um, but basically, you can take that information, and maybe you are a graphic design artist, and you can figure out a way to make that a little more compelling and a little more interesting. Pretty easy to do. Uh, just remember your essential graphics panel. And if you have any questions, call, text, or email if you know me. If not, leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching.